Today, we are going to talk about the inguinal ligament. Now, um, the inguinal ligament is um, a kind of a cool and interesting structure because generally speaking, the job of a ligament is to stabilize and support um, a bone as it goes from uh, one bone to another. So it traverses a joint, it goes over a joint. So you have uh, on the knee, you have uh, the lateral and medial meniscal ligaments and the various ligaments that go over the joints. And there are a couple of ligaments that are interesting because they don't go from one bone to another. And one of those will be up in the shoulder. So you have the uh, coracoid process, the, the hook that's on the, uh, on the shoulder, part of the shoulder blade, um, and the acromion, which is another part of the shoulder blade. So it's the sort of the same, uh, the same bone and it's got a little bit of a, uh, a ligament that goes from the coracoid process to the acromion. So that's the coracoacromial ligament. And the inguinal ligament is um, another one of those anomalies, if you like. So here's our pelvis. And this bone um, that we call the pelvic bone is, is called the innominate bone. And there's various uh, parts to it. So we have the, you know, the ischial tuberosity and the, the ilium um, and so on and so forth. Um, and of course, you know, at the back, we have the, uh, the, the sort of the crest of the ilium here um, and the PSIS, the posterior superior iliac spine and, and bits of sort of landmarks that, um, that are, are laid out um, on the onion. Yeah, but ultimately, it's, it's sort of still um, one bone by the time you're, you're born. Now, the ligament itself goes across, so it goes um, from the um, superior part of the spine, the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, and it travels across and it stops at the pubic bone. And uh, there's a very famous dissection that's um, used and shown a lot, um, and it's quite clear what's going on in that dissection. And so we're going to have a little look at that dissection picture. Here it is. This is the famous one. It's a lot of work that's gone into a dissection like this. This would take um, days, even a couple of weeks to get um, this together. And there's, it's remarkable because of what's missing. Um, but essentially what we can see here is a few of the structures. We can see the ASIS, we can see the psoas, and you can see here that it looks like the inguinal ligament is coming um, from the ASIS. It doesn't start anywhere prior to that, and it stops, bang, the moment it gets to that pubic bone. And um, there's, there's nothing else, there's no other suggestion that there's any uh, continuity. And of course, that's how it's been cut and that's how it's been made to look. But in reality, that's not how it looks at all. The thing about this is, however, though, is, is like a lot of structures in the body, in order to get to that um, image, in order to get to that picture, you have to take a lot of stuff away and, and leave and deliberately leave behind the thing um, that you want to demonstrate or, or exhibit. And the inward ligament is a really good example of that. So as we start to uh, do an examination, say, of the abdominal muscles, and we go, you know, external oblique, and, and we peel the external oblique away, and we take all of that away, all the way down to um, this lower portion, and then you take the internal oblique away, um, and then you get into sort of, you know, the bits of the rectus abdominis and the transverse abdominis, and quite often what you'll find is the, the inward ligament as such is, is gone, you know, it's not there anymore. And, and people go, well, what's happened to it? Well, the thing is, is that the, the, the inguinal ligament is made up of the lower portions of these abdominal tissues that are sort of folded around um, on each other. And so the best way of describing this is if I show you my incredible skills as an origamist. Is that a thing, an origamist? I don't think it is. Right, so here we go. Here's, our, here's my, here's say, I don't know, I've got four bits, of, four bits of paper here, four bits of scrap paper here. And, and you can see there are separate bits of paper. It sounds like a magician. You can see here, I've got nothing up my sleeve. Um, but if I take these bits of paper and I, and, I, and I fold them at the bottom, and I sort of fold them round and I sort of join them up and I fold them. Hello puppy, do you want to come up and join me? No, you can't. And I fold them around, then what you end up with is you end up with these sort of five separate structures, if you like, of paper that are all rolled around and joined uh, to... This isn't helping me at all. And joined up in one bit of, uh, one bit of kit um, at the bottom. And we refer to that as the inward ligament. Now it does have uh, some purpose. It creates um, some stability for uh, the pelvis and the, and, the, and the pubis. It's got um, a protective mechanism because if you imagine what else is going underneath this inward ligament, we've got the veins and the arteries for the leg. Um, you've got some tissues such as the psoas and the, uh, where it's joined up with um, iliacus to, to form the iliopsoas. That goes through this area as well. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's, there's a quite a lot of tissue that's gonna go on in here. 
um, that needs a lot of uh, stability and it needs a lot of housing. And there's also a lot of lymph nodes in here. So again, if you think about it, this is a fold in the, uh, in, in the, the, the body, if you like, the lower part of the body. And so wherever you've got something where you're going to have a lot of folding going, a lot of movement going on, you're going to find uh, lymph nodes because that's where lymph nodes hang out. They hang out in areas where they're going to get squeezed and pressurized in order to push uh, all that lymph and all that fat around the system and sort of get it back up into the uh, circulatory system and get cleaned out. So you've also got on the upper portion of it, sort of you know, if you go below that ligament and you go down onto the leg and you look at the, the fasciolata, the leg, the, the, the fascia that wraps around the leg, that's also going to be uh, forming part of the um, inguinal ligament. So you've got the fascia of the various layers of the abdomen that, get, that are going down to it um, and you've got the fascia at the top of the leg and it's all forming and wrapping itself around in order to um, form this, uh, this, this, this thing that we call a ligament. Now, there's a, a couple of, of weak areas in there because um, on men, what you've got is you've got the, uh, the uh, vas deferens coming up from the testicles. So the, the semen is coming up and it's going through that little triangle, that inguinal triangle. And so that can form a, a weakened area that sometimes you see herniated. Um, and you also see it, actually, I've seen it in a, a couple of dissections recently of, of women that have had hysterectomies. And it looks like uh, where the um, surgery has taken place. And even though it's gone in uh, with keyhole surgery, it's gone in and uh, there's been a little bit of um, herniation where that space is. And I found that twice um, this year. Um, the other thing about the inguinal ligament is that although we've seen in that dissection picture that, um, that it appears to sort of start from the ASIS and go right the way across and stop onto the uh, pubic bone, in, in, in point of fact, the, the stopping on one side and the, you know, the continuity on the other side is a, is a little bit arbitrary. You know, it'll stop there because I make it stop there and I cut it there. But actually, uh, what you'll find is that it, it's a, a, a happy continuity, if you like, across the top of the pubic bone. What also then happens from here, and we'll look at this in another, uh, another video, is that the adductor longus and the gracilis come up and they sort of cross over at this point. So it's a really interesting loading point onto this pubic bone in here. At the other end, what I've found are, on a regular basis is that the um, inward ligament joins up with um, you know, the, the fascia of, say, the sartorius, for example, and then is continuous, and that carries on around uh, the, the, the crest of the um, ovilium. And of course, the whole thing makes sense. You know, there, there's no point something beginning at one end and stopping at the other end and just you know, ending there, um, because you know, it has a job to do of um, not only creating stability, but the stability coming from from there being a transmission of uh, load and force uh, through the area. So, you know, lots of areas, lots of movement. You think about your sort of jumping up and down or running, there's gonna be a lot of pressure and a lot of load through this area. And so it stands to reason that any of those connective tissues are going to continue um, and both uh, transmit force and load and potentially communicate, um, you know, sort of tensionally and vibrationally with other areas um, of the body. So there we go, that's the inward ligament, a sort of whistle-stop tour, if you like. Um, interesting structure, lots in there, and lots, you know, if you took a sort of a dinner plate of this area and just studied um, between here and the back, you, you know, you'd be there for, for weeks, possibly months, looking at all the tissues uh, that are in, uh, in this space. So it's a really uh, kind of cool spot. So, so the site of groin strains, loads of other things, and sort of sports injuries is a, an area that uh, perhaps the anatomy could be uh, looked at slightly differently. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, let me know. Leave a comment in the, uh, in, the, in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like, share, do all the things that you're supposed to do, to do on social media. And I'm being interrupted by a, a small dog here. Come here. Come and say hello. Say hello. This is Morris. Say hello, Morris. No, not you. See you later. Puh, puh.